The Comedy Bus presents Laugh Out Loud. Now here's your host, Mike G. Williams. No jokes for me. No, I'm not even going to start. I'm not going to tell you a joke. Nothing like that. We're jumping right into the show. We'll say one thing. I stopped by the bookstore today. I won't mention the name of it. Family Christian. Stopped by the bookstore. They were selling this. Check this out. What would Jesus do? Pepper spray. Look at this. Just crack me up. I'm just... It's like, all right, back off, Judas. You kiss me one more time, you're getting it in the eyes. No, that, that, was, that was wrong. That was wrong. I apologize. Apologize to the family there. Ladies and gentlemen, please make welcome the funniest man to ever tunnel under the Mexican border, Coleto Rodriguez. <laughs> Thank you. All right, how you doing, everybody? Oh, I'm very excited. That's my name, Cleto Rodriguez. I know what you're thinking. What a winner. Uh, yeah, I love, I'm, I'm from San Antonio, Texas, and I love being from Texas. Thank you. That's my parents right there. I appreciate them coming. Uh, <laughs> I love San Antonio because they can say Cleto. You know, I just met a man earlier, and uh, he was from uh, Alabama. Yeah, he goes, uh, how do you say your name? I said, it's Cleto. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, look here, Julio. Uh, what time's your show start? <laughs> And that's nothing. I was talking to that guy from Oklahoma. I love the way they say Cleto over there. Hey, Kleenex! <laughs> Groaning back. <laughs> oh, I'm very excited. Uh, just celebrating our eighth year wedding anniversary. Thank you, Lord. This, yes. I married a beautiful, beautiful Christian woman because God will use a beautiful woman to get you to go to church. And uh, yeah, because I didn't know my wife was in touch with her faith when I met her because at my time I was like, and uh, I remember I asked her out and everything. It was kind of neat because you ever realize, I went to my wife's church. She went to a non-denominational church, and, and I went to a Catholic church. And uh, it was, any recovering Catholics in here by any chance? I, okay. And, uh, and see, we only went on the mandatory dates. And, uh, and I tell you, I was there, and I, it was weird because uh, the first time I went to her church, you ever realize you haven't been to church in a long time and you go back? For some reason, doesn't it seem like the service is directed right toward you? I was in there, I heard words like, worthless, lazy, weak. <laughs> I didn't know what to do, I just stood up, here I am. <laughs> oh, you weren't talking to me? I'm sorry, I thought you were talking to me. <laughs> I told my wife, did you tell him I was coming or what? <laughs> and see, and, and, I, and I went to my wife's church, and, and I tell you what, they took it up a notch with her first service at her church, the, the whole service, the, it made me cry. It did, I'm gonna tell you how. Out of all the people in the congregation, the pastor looked at me and said, son, is your name in the book of life? Well, sir, my name's Kleppel. It's not even in the book of baby names. I'm on a burning house. <laughs> then my daughter Cletha thinks she has it bad, you know what I'm saying? So. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, it's so funny. So, and the one thing about the whole church thing was kind of interesting to me, the first service, is that the pastor talked without even talking, and he made me feel crazy. Because this is what he did. My first time I was talking, he went like this. You're not hearing me. You're not hearing me. I'm sitting down like this. What do you say? I'm like, man, he's good. <laughs> but when he did speak, boy, did people listen. Ha! You get in an argument, you make sure you catch that devil out right there. <laughs> Scared me too, man. You know what I'm saying? I never passed gas that loud in church in my life. <laughs> Ever. My whole hemorrhoid went, like, ah! he, said, he said, you simply look up and say, devil, get the heck out of here. <laughs> Folks, when I heard that, that's all I needed to hear. My first time in church, I went home that afternoon, football was on, and I hadn't cut the grass yet. And my wife came in and turned the TV off. 
there. I didn't get mad. I remember what the pastor told me. I looked at my wife and I said, Devil! Get the heck out of here! I turn the TV on now! <laughs> yeah, you clap. I couldn't see TV for three weeks. <laughs> Never called her devil ever again. But I definitely do love God, you know, and he's been blessed me left and right. Blessed me with a beautiful baby girl that recently, and I'm very excited about that. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for clapping. Uh, <laughs> but really, you don't have to clap. It's our fifth one. Uh, <laughs> Because <laughs> we're trying to make a band. Anyway, why is it when you tell people, you know, that your baby was born at 15 pounds and 3 ounces, they all freak out. Like that right there, sir. Thank you very much. Not our baby. Our baby was 8 pounds, 7 ounces. The lady, the, we were in the delivery room while we heard the little, ah! I moved the curtain back, the lady, the little kid came out, hey, what's going on? <laughs> we had problems during the pregnancy for us. You know, my little girl came out face up and she got stuck. And they had to use a little vacuum thing on her head called the Dirt Devil. <laughs> we are going to use the rainbow, but we didn't pass the credit app. Anyway, the whole time my little girl's coming out face up, I'm looking at her. The whole time I'm looking at her, she's looking like my father-in-law. And he's not the prettiest man, you know what I'm saying? My wife got mad because she's looking at me, looking at the birth of our kid. I'm not going to lie, I was looking at my daughter come out of my wife like she was a bad fax. I was like... <laughs> what? I told the doctor, is this the cover page? What are they? <laughs> and she's always mad at me. Like the other day, I was changing my little girl's diaper. And I don't know what she ate, but man, I was like crying and gagging. <laughs> and I ran out of those baby wipes. So I started using these Clorox wipes we had under the sink. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> and not the smell out like that helped me out a lot. The only thing is, my little girl looks so white now, she doesn't even look Mexican anymore. <laughs> But it's cool, we use it to our advantage because the other day we needed a loan and she's the only one that got approved, so we're excited. <laughs> yeah, no co-signer, all right. <laughs> My wife decided to nurse our child. Yeah. I found out early on. I found out that I could not home my baby without a shirt and watch TV at the same time. <laughs> because it hurt. That was the worst pain I ever felt in my life. I was sitting there watching football. 30, 40. <laughs> my baby just hooked on. Like a pit bull, just... <laughs> and it hurt so bad, I stood up, she was just hanging out. <laughs> I had to burn her off like a tick. Get out of here! I'm seeing, I was looking at my baby, Devil, get out! <laughs> I don't know what was worse. Finding out I needed a bra. Or that she was full. My stepson's over there. Hey, Cleppo, got milk? Get out of here! May God bless each and every one of you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Please welcome Paul Aldridge. All right, I got one question for you tonight. Are you ready to rock? We're gonna take a, a quick little trip down uh, down music lane here. The, the first songs I ever learned were, were Sunday school songs, uh, beautiful little songs like you know this little light of mine or uh, the B I B L E. Ah, that's the book for me. Ah. I did my own choreography in Sunday school. Thank you. Um, and I got thinking though, you know, I wonder do other religions teach their kids songs? You know, like of course we know Catholics, you know, they teach their kids songs like you know B I N G O B I N G O. <laughs> That's how we pay the bills, oh yeah. Uh, and of course Baptists, you know, 
99 bottles of beer on the wall, 99 bottles of beer. Take them down and pass it around, but don't open it or drink or dance or do anything that's fun. 99 bottles of beer on the wall. <laughs> but really, though, you know, do other religions teach their, their kids songs? Like, do Hindus have songs? Like, uh, you know, uh, uh, Old MacDonald had a sacred cow. E-I-E-I-O. It turns out it was his brother Al. E-I-E-I-O. I don't, I'm just asking the question. I do not know the answer here. Or do m Muslim kids, you know, if you're happy and you know it, shout, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just asking the question, okay? Um, but I want to do a little love song for you here this evening. Um, a lot of love songs have been written through the years, but I was thinking the other day, you know, there, there's never really been a love song written for dyslexics until now. What a wonderful name, Kathy. Y H T A K. And as I spoke her name one last time, Kathy died and went to heaven. But then, without warning, she became gravely ill. <laughs> we were so happy then. <laughs> we had a boy. Then a girl, soon we were expecting our first. <laughs> Finally we bought a home, then moved into our first apartment. So off we went on our honeymoon. Soon she was dressed in white, walking down the aisle. The next day, I asked her to marry me. Y-H-T-A-K as we danced the night away, I said, would you care to dance? <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> My name is Paul. Then she asked me, what's yours? <laughs> My name is Kathy with a Y and a K. It was love at first sight. Then suddenly, I saw her. All my life, I felt so alone. It's not dyslexic being easy. Why ain't she a a woman who combined country line dancing with therapy. Now she's in a 12-step, two-step program. First, choose a partner who reminds you of your mom or dad. Then you form a support group circle and y'all join hands. Then lead your victim partner where you want to go, but ladies, don't you follow them to do-side go. Do the 12-step, two-step, side the codependent boogie. This time, ladies first. Blow, kiss to your honey, then stomp his self-esteem. That's right. Gents, bow to your darling, then let out a primal scream. Ow! They drop, step, kick their inner child, arm and arm, promenade your denial. Do the 12 step, two step, side of codependent boogie. Well, the two step forward, and 12 steps back. Redneck recoveries, where it's at. So give your therapist a whirl and say, Yahoo! Dance like a real pillow fit at the country floor. Do the fingers lead the hand?
dead Ford and pills and black Red deck cover reads where it's at Give me there to prove the world Hey, ah, woo! Man's like a real militant Got red blue Who best for the pills and black Red deck cover reads where it's at So grab your boots, your hat Head on that cool Man's like a real militant Got red blue Who knows the new best for the black Not because of the pen Tonight, I give you the entire Bible in eight minutes. We are back, ladies and gentlemen, with the beginning of creation. If just tuned in, it's the angels up against the little demons. And the first inning, Lord God Jehovah stepped up the plate, hauled back and hit a grand slam and created the heavens and the earth, and it was good. In the second inning, a deluge of water came out of nowhere, but the game was not called because it was good. In the third inning, he covered the field with vegetables. I love those guys, they crack me up. In the fourth inning, he popped up the sun, then the moon, then the stars are marked night and day, but called it good. In the fifth inning, he cracked one foul, then a fish, then a multitude of fish and fowl, and called it good. In the sixth inning, he scooped down, picked up some clay, spit in it, and hauled back and created a man! in his own image. The crowd went wild for that one. Lucifer was on deck and he did not look happy. Right now we're in the middle of the seventh inning stretch with no one in sight, but one thing's for sure, it'll never be called on in darkness because it's good! <laughs> Lord, we're going to have a baby? I'm a hundred. Sarah's ninety. Let's adopt. You are all wise, but would you want to live with a 90-year-old pregnant woman? I don't think so. I'll say push. She'll say I'm tired. You push. Not a good idea. <laughs> Rounding out the Egyptian top 10, we had hail, locusts, and who can forget? Three days of darkness. Coming up, our number one plague. But first, a request. It goes out to Pharaoh from a man named Moses who writes, Let my people go. <laughs> Old man Moses. That old man, Moses, he don't say nothing. He just keeps on walking. That old man, Moses, he just keeps walking along. You and me, we sweat and strain, lost in the desert and praying for rain. Pitch that tent, catch that quail. You eat your breakfast early or the manna goes stale. Delilah says stupid is a stupid does. <laughs> so I let her tie me up. Then all these Philistines come in and go, Delilah, they tried to kill me. And she said, run, Samson, run. But I could not because she'd give me a haircut and that's all I had to say about that. <laughs> Dear God, you made me king over all I survey. Help me defeat Goliath and jealousy of Saul. I shall worship you as long as the sun rises in the east and sets in the... Who is that woman taking a bath? Sheba, my, oh, my, oh, my. <laughs> because I used to worship God when I was just a lad. The king would give me nose a tweak and say that I was bad. But then one day he passed a law in which he stubbed me toes. I broke the law and took the fall, and this is how it goes. Oh, me and Shadrach and Abednego were thrown into a furnace. Turn up the heat some seven times, you still will fail to burn us. There's a lesson here for all of us to take to heart and learn us. Always have an angel there when you're thrown into a furnace. I'm the little, I'm the lie, I'm the little, I'm the lie. When they tossed Daniel into my den, I said, Oh my God. I couldn't eat him. I was afraid to. People of Nineveh, I've just been vomiting upon your shores. After spending three days in the belly of the great beast, repent or I shall not bathe. Okay, 
You're not going to believe what just happened. We were out tending our flocks by night, which is what we do, when from out of nowhere comes this angel of light and says our Savior's been born in the city of David. And then this whole host of angels appears. So we run and we go there and we tell this cute little couple what we've just seen. And they say, tell us something we don't know. And then we realize, this is the Christ child. And we fall on our faces and we're worshiping it. And we go back worshiping God every step of the way. And that's when we found out your sheep are missing. We have no idea where they are. We're so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he touched my eyes and said, You're simply forgiven, and I could see. <laughs> and they asked me, Who was that man? And I said, I can honestly say I've never seen him before in my life. <laughs> I know he chose the 12 of us, so it must be right, but is it just me, or does Judas give you the creeps? <laughs> this just in. Jesus of Nazareth, crucified on Friday, was resting in peace until early this morning, when a man of light rolled away the two-ton stone in front of his tomb. The Roman squadron ran inside and found the burial cloth was still intact, but Jesus himself was missing. The Sanhedrin are claiming it to be a hoax, but have yet to produce a body. And as of this comment, the disciples were not available for comment. <laughs> well, now, no, no. Here, here, oh, here, oh, here, here's what I'm saying. Uh, I, 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 I will, I, I, no, no, I won't believe he's alive unless I, unless I stick my hand in his side, my finger in his. Oh, oh my Lord, my God, that's a hole, all right. Well, Ananias, looks like you've got to ask yourself a question. When you sold your property, did you give the disciples five shekels or six? I might as well warn you. You lie to the Holy Spirit, he's the most powerful weapon ever known to mankind. He'll blow your head clean off. So I'm going to ask you, do you feel lucky, punk? <laughs> So, love is patient, love is kind, love does not insist on its own way. It hopes all things, believes all things, and does all things. Well, you might even say, all you need is love. <laughs> say, Paul, that's not bad. <laughs> Imagine if you will, the end of mankind as we know it. The four horses of the apocalypse destroying a third of mankind. The Antichrist, drinking the blood of the saints with the whore of Babylon. Strange, yes. Bizarre, undoubtedly. But that's what happens if you take the mark of the beast, because now you're stuck in the tribulation zone. <laughs> and it all ends with one song. I see streets of gold. Red roses to God's paradise for me and for you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Yes, I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Whoa, Please welcome Bean and Bailey! Thank you. Thank you so much. You don't know how much your warm, warm, uh, you know, audience participation, the nice uh, applause means so much to us because, to be honest, comedy people is a funny thing. Okay. <laughs> a little joke there. Yeah, yeah, a little, little joke. I'm just saying, you know, that it's nice that when you tell a joke, if there's not a crowd out there, it's hard to tell whether it's funny. Okay, we, we all understand that, Jackson, okay? so okay, uh, I'm just saying thank you for coming out tonight because oh. when we first started doing this, or trying to do this for a living, we do shows at our own houses, and our parents wouldn't even come, and that's, <laughs> that's yeah, frustrating. Uh, you know what, what Jackson, saying? What Jackson is saying is, in the early days, we did not get a lot of support. Right, it's like a saggy bra. <laughs> <laughs> not a lot of support, so I'm saying. Okay, what Jackson's trying to say is, thank you for coming out tonight. And that's Jackson right. and I thank say, you. right thank now, so let's get this audience involved early on, and the best way to do that would be to start out with some folk music. Those songs that we all know, those songs that we learned in school, those songs that tell 
the American story that people clap there. Jackson, do you know what I'm talking about? Folk music. You're talking about Elvis, right? No. Is it a woman for the money? Okay. Well, you like Stop. that. Hey, Jackson, whoa. Elvis Presley's music was not folk music. My folks liked it. Okay. <laughs> All right. No, you know what I'm talking about, okay? Now, okay, let's do... these songs don't make any sense. I'm They're not supposed like to make so... sense. You enjoy them, you don't analyze them. Now, let's do You Get a Line, I'll Get a Bowl. Here we go. You get a line, I'll get a bowl, honey. There we go. You get a line, I'll get a bowl, babe. All right. You get a line, I'll get a bowl. Oh, you go fishing for that hole, honey. Baby, my... All right, you know what? You know what, Jackson? People, people were enjoying that until you started making fun of it. It doesn't make any sense. Who's going to take the first date through crawdad hole? All right, you know what? Maybe, maybe I picked the wrong song for you. Well, okay? maybe you did. How about Jimmy Crack Corn? <laughs> what? No, I'm not going to sing about a bowel movement. Okay, it's not going to happen. Cracked corn. What does that mean? It's like shucking corn or something, okay? okay. Well, All right, just for, go for the record, what I thought it meant makes a lot more sense. Okay, thank you. All right, let's just, we can't do that song. Thank you very much. How about uh, She'll Be Coming Around the Mountain? Do you guys like She'll Be Coming Around the Mountain? Huh? All right, here we go. I do like this coming. song. This is a good song. All right, if you I've like always it, enjoyed stop, singing this. Hey, if you like it, stop talking about it, and we'll all sing it. Here uh -huh. we go. It's just She'll I've always wondered, you know. <laughs> Who is coming Doesn't around the matter. mountain? Doesn't matter. Hey, hey, does not matter who's coming around the mountain. Here we go. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. All right. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. She'll be coming around the mountain. She'll be coming around the mountain. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. All right. They loved it. Let's do that first. She'll be riding six white horses. Walk. She's huge. <laughs> I'm just saying one horse is big. Okay, okay. But you got one lady on six horses. Okay. I've never seen a lady that big. Okay, thank you, Jackson. That's, that's enough. Thank At you. least the second verse makes more sense to me now. What? I think that says, well, I'll go out to feed her. No, it does not say that. All right, look, Jackson. Okay. Jackson. That's what I thought it said. Jackson, apparently you don't want to do any folk musics. So I suggest we do our brand new country song, okay? Because I know you like okay. this one. This is, this is a song that we wrote out of necessity because being from Tennessee, we travel around the country and people say, oh, you're from Tennessee, country music. And we say, uh, I guess so. So we realized we needed a country song. So this is our very first attempt at a pure country song. Jackson gets into his country groove when he puts on the hat. We feel that we have captured the true country spirit with this our first attempt at a pure country song. She's the uptight kind Always some riding on her mind She don't have to say a word I know when she's perturbed Three years now to the day I stood beside her all the way But our future's hard to see When she's throwing things at me Should I tie this knot? I don't really want to let her go But before we can go any further, babe There's one thing I've got to know your Cheerios <laughs> Only heaven knows We could be peas in a pod But baby Who's got your panties in such a while? I'm just a simple country man Got nothing against her wedding plans But I'd be a fool not to contemplate Her hormones changing at alarming rates She's like a time bomb I can hear the ticking in her head I'd be ready now to marry her But I might just end up dead Who beat in your Cheerios? Only heaven knows We could be peas in a pot But who's 
got your pennies and such a one Reach behind you Lock all the doors Grasp all that's yours Release the pain Unwind your hands So bleed in the cheerio Such a one. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, so you. We're being a Bailey. God bless you. Thank you. Please welcome Rich Rachel. How many married people we got here? Marriage. This marriage is great. I love being married. A lot of people ask me, how did you know your wife was the one? That's easy. She told me. <laughs> we got married on July 30th, 2004. We were supposed to get married on May 22nd. A couple months before that, true story, the day before the wedding, my wife and I got into a huge argument, broke up the day before the wedding. We, had to, we canceled all our plans. One of the saddest days of my life. But the good news was, I saved a bunch of money on car insurance by switching to Geico. <laughs> We eventually got married in Aspen, Colorado. How many of you guys have been to Aspen, Colorado? Aspen is beautiful. Aspen is 9,200 feet elevation. We were coming from sea level. We had everything, you know, going on. We had everything planned. We had the romantic condo. We had the, the, the candle lights. We had everything except the oxygen. <laughs> Hard to be romantic when there's no oxygen. My wife was trying to be romantic, coming out of the, you know, like out of the bathroom. Hey, honey. I didn't get married until I was 30 years old, you know, because the thing was, is I want to make, make sure I dated someone and married someone who had the same beliefs that I did. That, that, that was very important to me. I made a mistake about six and a half years ago. I went to this one girl. We, we didn't believe in the same stuff, so we had to break up, you know. I was a Christian, and she happened to be the devil. <laughs> so it didn't really work out. <laughs> I should have saw the warning sign. She didn't have a shadow. <laughs> I did a one girl, she's uh, Canadian from Canada, gorgeous, beautiful. She was like a 10, and she was like a 10. Well, she's a Canadian 10, no with the exchange rate. <laughs> You're like over here, she's like a six and a half or something. But in Mexico, she was like 4,000. Oh, no. <laughs> but being married, you know, almost four years, I've learned something. I think when God was creating the woman, I think he was walking around heaven going, what can I create that would confuse and baffle the man so much, his only choice is going to be to turn to me. I've just learned so much in marriage. I've learned we're going to be able to explore the surface of the sun. All we're going to have to do is send up two women in a rocket ship up to the sun because it doesn't matter how hot it'll get, one of them will always go, I'm cold! I'm cold! Are you cold? I'm cold! Can we turn the heater to lava? I'm cold! I'm cold! Also realize we'll never have woman referees in professional football. That'll never happen. You know why? Because she's refing a game, she'll throw a flag. The guy's like, what'd I do? You know what you did. <laughs> and then the next play, she'll throw another fact. Brr, the guy's like, what did I do now? I seem to recall something from the first quarter. <laughs> <laughs> and being married, I realized there was a lot, there was a lot of little differences, um, you know, that I didn't realize. You know, like when I was single, like after I got married, like after six months, I realized men and women shower differently. That was a big thing. Here, here's the thing. A man, when he showers, has two things. He has shampoo and a bar of soap, maybe. 
And those two things are interchangeable anytime. And if he doesn't have, have it, you know, he just grabs some toothpaste. <laughs> That's pretty much it. A woman, when she showers, has 713 things in the shower, all bought at the produce section at Walmart. You know, the, the water has to be exactly 113.7 degrees when it's coming out. She starts off with an apricot cilantro shampoo fortified with 98 vitamins and minerals because apparently her hair is working out. And then she does a mango papaya conditioner with sweet and sour sauce on the side, which has to be left in your hair for 15 minutes or else it'll explode. And then she does a sugar-based facial scrub with a feather from a baby penguin. And then finishes it off with a ginger and frappuccino body wash with whipped cream and chocolate sprinkles on the side. Talk about a high carb shower. My wife smells so good after shower, I don't know whether to hug her or go to IHOP. Why do women want to smell like fruit? Do you really want a guy going up to you and you have great hair? I want a banana. Why are there fruit flies over your hair, man? That's odd. I will tell you one story. This is why I love being married because I don't have to deal with all the dating stuff anymore. Because about seven year, years ago, I went out with this woman. This is, you know, this is like like the you know like the the horror date story. It was it was terrible. I want like I really wanted to impress this girl. Like I took her to lunch. We went to uh, Taco Bell. So, <laughs> so we got our food. I bowed my head to pray. I looked down, and she had sandals on. And she had the hairiest toes I had ever seen in my life. You ever look at something and just go, oh my God. I went home, I looked this up on the internet. There's a word for people who have this. It's called nasty. We're over at her friend's house, we're watching TV and she leans over to me and says, Rich, whisper sweet nothings to me. I'm gonna buy you a razor. <laughs> What'd you say? I didn't say anything. Didn't say anything. <laughs> and then she wants me to play with her toes and massage her feet and be all romantic. And I'm just like, oh. <laughs> So I'm trying to give her the hint. I'm just trying to let her know without hurting her feelings too much. I'm like, you know, you know, sweetie, this little piggy went to Supercuts. <laughs> This little piggy needed a comb. <laughs> this little piggy was Chewbacca. <laughs> <laughs> this little piggy had an afro. <laughs> and this little piggy went nair, nair, nair all the way home. Hey, God bless you guys. Have a great rest of the night. tonight. Oh, wow. What, what a show. What a bunch of sick people that there are in this room. This has been great tonight, man. I was just laughing over there. I was just having a good time right with you. Going, I wish I was that funny. I'm kind of the preacher of the group, you know. I spent some time as a minister. Some of you know that. And, uh, and uh, that was the toughest two and a half weeks of my life, too. I want you to know that. Uh, my church felt the same way about it. <laughs> they were good. But I want to leave tonight speaking into your heart a little bit. Because life's tough sometimes, you know. When we come to nights like this, I, I believe that laughter is Prozac for the soul. Do you know what I'm talking about? I got nothing against Prozac either. Take mine at 8.30, all right? So I'll be, I'll be kicking it in here real soon. And the other day I accidentally took x lax and Prozac together. Yeah, oh man, spent the whole day in the bathroom, but I was happy about it. But anyway, that's, that's wrong, that's wrong, I'm sorry. We'll edit that out too. Uh, this video will be 12 minutes long. Last November, I was um, in Atlanta, Georgia, with these guys you saw up here on stage, and we were trying to do a video just like this. And, we had hired a video crew to come in and we had spent uh, a lot of money, you know, six of us, and they 
were charging us six thousand dollars and we split the cost so i only had to pay like forty two hundred <laughs> doesn't seem right but anyway long story short we set up all the cameras all the trucks and we got ready we did the test rehearsal and the guy who ran the company came to us and he said mike he goes you know i can believe this never happened before but our hard disk has crashed on our main computer and the closest one that we have that we'll slap in here is in England. The video is not going to work. And we were all depressed, okay, just to be honest with you. You know, you put a lot of work into something like that. 2,600 people had bought tickets to be at a video that wasn't going to happen. And they had to dress up and everything like that. And we were all kind of tense. We were all kind of upset about it. And we, everybody deals with that in a different way. And uh, I found myself, we were in Atlanta, I found myself... Uh, going out to a place called Stone Mountain. I don't know, have you ever been to Stone Mountain? It's a beautiful place. They've got a, they've got a mountain there and it's, a, it's made out of stone. <laughs> they've, uh, they've got a choo-choo train that runs around there and uh, they've carved all the pictures of all the Confederate generals right there in the side of the mountain because hey, you wouldn't want to forget what those guys have meant to us. Um, <laughs> there's a tough room right here, I tell you that. <laughs> But I'm just out there trying to mellow out because here's the deal, you know what? No matter, no matter what's happening in our world up here, you guys have come to laugh and it's our job to help you laugh and help you deal with stuff in your life. And because a merry heart does good like a medicine, we're here to bring the medicine, you know? And I'm, I'm sitting out there trying to mellow out and flying across the face of this mountain is the most beautiful eagle that I had ever seen in my life. Now, now do, you, do you guys have eagles where you live? And you see, I live in Lakeland, Florida. We do not have eagles where I live, okay? We had one. Tastes like chicken. <laughs> no, I thought it was a free-range chicken, really. I promise you that. Uh, right, it does taste a lot like spotted owl, but you need a pair of those to have a decent dinner. But anyway. Um, <laughs> you know, you laugh much better than they did at the PETA conference. I, I just... <laughs> I didn't know. I thought it meant people eat tasty animals. I had no idea. Uh, but I'm sitting out there and I'm watching this beautiful eagle and I said, I want to get a picture of that eagle and take it home to my son. I have a wonderful son at home who really likes eagles. And I didn't have my camera, so I ran back to the little gift store there. And uh, right there at the ranger station, they have a, a little Stone Mountain gift shop. And I went in there and I bought one of those Kodak cameras where you get 27 shots for only $32.95 and uh, there at the gift store and I paid for my camera. And in the time it took for me to go in and buy the camera and come out, the world had changed. The time it took for me to pay for the camera, head out the door, what was a beautiful sunny day had turned to a dark day. Because over the back of that mountain, I didn't see it because it was behind the mountain, you know. Coming up behind that mountain was a storm front. Not just a storm front, you know what I mean, a wall of darkness. We've seen those kind of storms before. And uh, I didn't know it. And I walked out and all of a sudden it felt like the temperature had dropped 10 degrees, you know how they could be, and the wind was whipping up and it started spitting rain. You're not, you know, not raining, but just you could tell that any minute it's going to break loose. And I got angry. Mr. Fine Funny, Mr. Learn to Laugh, Mr. Life is Fun, Enjoy the Ride, got angry. I stamped my foot, I shook my fist, and I said, what, what, you know, come on. By the time I get back up to the mountain to be able to take a picture of this eagle with this camera I bought, by the time that happens, that eagle's going to run and hide. He's not going to stay out here in this weather. He's going to go to its nest. He's going to find a hollowed out spot in the rock. He's going to hide. But what was so amazing, folks, is that eagle did not hide. That eagle took the same wind that was coming against it and used that wind to lift it up higher. And I said, whoa, that'll preach. Take that which is coming against you. Turn it around. Use it to lift you up higher. I look at you guys tonight and I say, you know what? Y'all look pretty good. You dress up nice. That's what we'd say in the South. You know, y'all dress good. And if I passed you in the hall or... Yeah, I, I'd see, I'd say those people look like they got it all together. But I know that if you're anything like anyone else in this room, some of you are going home to struggles tonight. Some of you are going back home to hurts. I want to encourage you tonight. I want this whole night to be an encouragement to you to take that which is coming against you and turn it around and use it to lift you up higher. Do I know how you're going to do it? No, but I know it can be done. Max Cicado 
said something that spoke to my heart years ago. He said, opportunity knocks, but tragedy kicks the door in. And you may be the one person out here that's sitting there going, you know what, Mike? No, everything's just fine in my life. Everything's just great. It's just perfect. And I just want to say to you that Monday is on the way. <laughs> so whether you're needing the song tonight or you're needing the song tomorrow, this song is for you. As the rain began to fall, I just got a little golf pencil that I keep in my back pocket. And I wrote out a song. Now, I don't write a lot of serious songs. I've written 150 comedy songs over the past 15 years. I've written four serious songs. This is one of them. It's called The Eagle Song. And I hope it speaks to your heart and encourages you to take that which is coming against you and turn it around, use it to lift you up higher. As the rain began to fall, I just wrote down what I believe that eagle said to me. It goes like this. Thank you. 